Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome to Alicia and the city. It's very, very good to see you here as always. Welcome to the holiday season. We are just a couple days away from year 2021. I'm super excited about new year. I hope that this crazy year of 2020 would be over and the new changes, new positive changes are on the horizon. However, I, um, I'm not done with the holidays just yet, as you can tell. And Last night I rewatched a movie which I used to love quite dearly to my heart, which is Love Actually, a British holiday classic. I think the movie came out initially in 2004 and I watched many times ever since. However, I think the last time I rewatched it fully was I think 2014-ish. Um, so it's it's been <laughs> quite some time, as you can tell, and I would catch occasional snippets of it on TV. I think HBO shows it quite a lot, but I wouldn't, I haven't sitting down really and watched the entire movie from beginning to end ever since. So last night I felt kind of nostalgic, and you know, it's it's a holiday movie after all. So I decided to give it another try, and um, I was very very surprised by the way how it didn't have the same effect on me as it used to a few years ago and actually was quite disappointed because the movie doesn't make any sense and i will explain to you why and please let me know in comments down below what do you think about this movie if you agree with me if you disagree just spill it out <laughs> i want to know it all okay so without further ado let's dive in as per usual and i don't even know where to start there are so many things about this movie I want to tell. Um, so as you probably already know, this movie is a sort of uh, complexity of different stories. Um, some of them are intersect and people kind of know each other, some people don't. Um, but it's, um, it's basically like multiple love storylines about different relationships. But uh, majority of those relationships don't make any sense. And let's uh, go to the first couple. So the first couple I want to talk about, it's actually not a couple, it's a triangle. So it's Karen and Harry and Mia, who is Harry's secretary or his assistant. So uh, if you remember from the movie, Harry is played by Alan Rickman. And um, Karen, his wife, is played by Emma Thompson. So, what's wrong with this whole love triangle situation? So, Harry is a boss and he, you know, he he's a professional. He goes on his business day by day and then he has this weird secretary assistant person who is basically harassing him at his workplace and she keeps telling him how she sort of um, wants to be alone with him and then um, she wants him all by himself and the weird part is that he neither tells her to stop it even though technically that would be the most appropriate um, response because you know <laughs> he's her boss um, neither he is sort of encouraging it he never showed any kind of affection towards her or anything like that which is weird because uh, so we I guess as a viewer of a movie, you supposed to think that they have some kind of relationship. Um, however, it was never really shown. And that's the weird part. So, like, are they lovers? Are they not? Is he just, like, <laughs> belling his options? What's going on here? Um, and then we find out that he's cheating on his wife because he gives this expensive necklace to his assistant for Christmas. Uh, meanwhile, to his wife, uh, he gives um, like a cheap music CD, but to his credit, I want to point out that she mentioned that it's her favorite singer of all time, so he actually did listen and get her like a pretty good gift. However, um, the weird part about this triangle, again, uh, besides Harry not being neither here nor there, also like how weird his assistant behaves totally inappropriate totally unprofessional i don't understand why would he even keep her <laughs> to work working for him um and another part of it that he he still got her that expensive gift uh and 
the ending of the movie, towards the ending of the movie, he sort of tried to restore his pride by apologizing to his wife. And the reaction of his wife is quite interesting to me. She um, actually tells him, oh, you know, honey, that's okay. That's, that's what happens. I'm just glad you're back. Let's just not talk about it. Let's forget the whole deal. Listen, it happens. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> um, you think that your husband was cheating on you? He had a love affair with his secretary and that's how, how you act? So I understand the point they're trying to make that in order to save the family, she sort of sacrifices her feelings and whatever they have between them is way more valuable than having a scandal. But I also feel like this whole story wasn't really developed. I feel like, you know, both Harry and Karen um, need to understand what they want out of this relationship and if it's working and it's working, if not, um, and, you know, they want to work and that they have to work it through together, not just her closing eyes on it and just pretending that nothing happened or just, you know, separating uh, because clearly they have some issues. So this whole um, love story, I find it very, very sad, um, just like on multiple levels, they end up hurting each other and suffering in their relationship, which is awful. Uh, all right, so there is another weird relationship with this um, Sarah and Carl. So there is a girl named Sarah, if you remember her. So if you remember her story, basically Sarah works in Harry's company and she is in love with a guy named Carl for over two years, but she's too afraid to start anything because she has a mentally ill brother, as we find out later. And she needs to take um, a lot of care of him because he calls her all the time. He basically disrupts her entire life. Uh, however, um, the weird part is not that. That I completely understand. But uh, on Christmas party in the office, Carl ends up um, hooking up with Sarah. And the interesting part is that nothing happens because uh, their hookup is interrupted by uh, Sarah's brother, Cole. And supposedly he also has feelings for her because, you know, he approached her and everyone in the office knows that she's in love with him. But he never... So, you know, they say bye-bye, she, rush, she rushes to see her brother, and then they never follow up on that. He never tries to do, you know, to continue relationship with her, and in my head, I'm thinking, what a jerk. <laughs> this woman has been in love with him for almost three years, and he didn't even find a place in his heart to sort of give the relationship a chance. Yes, it's a challenge. Yes, she has a mentally ill brother who she needs to take care of. But maybe rather than being a jerk, you actually would help her out and maybe you would make this relationship work. So yeah, very sad, very sad ending. They didn't end up being together because she was kind of like, oh, I'm gonna end up alone. And she just cries and, you know, and nothing happened. So. I don't know how this movie is a love story. So far, all every story is very dramatic and it doesn't end well. <clears throat> then there is this weird father and son relationship. So Daniel, portrayed by Liam Neeson, and his weird son. <laughs> so um, here are them. And um, Daniel's wife um, had died. And as we find out from the beginning of the movie, they show us a funeral. And then the speech Daniel gives at the funeral is very, very disturbing, to be honest with you. Yes, he says, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'm going to miss my wife. But he says, if I ever meet Claudia Schiffer, who is a supermodel, I, you know, that would help me heal and I would forget about my wife. Dude, you at her funeral. Like, this is so disrespectful to say that in front of all the friends and family that you're thinking, yes, I understand he meant it as a joke, um, but actually, as we will find out by the end of the movie, he would actually meet a Claudia Schiffer and he would actually fall in love with her, like, literally two weeks after his wife's death. Like, this is fucked up, I'm sorry. Um, man, 
just you know and we can see that there was no grieving period for him and actually the way how he behaves towards his son is sort of like he's not even related to him and i only find out that he was actually his dad in the end of the movie and when this kid calls him dad because the kind of advices he gave them they were not fatherly advices it was like a weird uncle who had never seen him before would give him and i just find it again very disturbing and then there is this kid i forgot the name of a kid but he has this obsession with the girl which is in the beginning it sounds all cute and nice that you know he has a girl um in his class so he's british she's american and she lives um to the united states after the holidays and she never comes back but he's in love with her so he um, asks his dad to help him to you know win her heart which is nice but then he becomes totally over obsessive with her and she, he joins a band and he would just do anything to catch her attention and I just found it very weird oh and then there was another part which I hate it like it actually made my skin <laughs> sort of curl because um there was a point when his dad Daniel um he tells him about love and blah 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 and then the kid says oh maybe one day you're gonna meet someone and he, again the, the weird uh Claudia Schiffer joke he says well if I meet her we're gonna have sex in all the apartment including your room who says that to their little kid that they're gonna have sex in their room what the hell dude like that was so gross I <laughs> I, I just I just was shocked wow that was very, very bad. Okay. Then we have this weird couple of Juliet, Peter, and Mark. So Juliet was uh, played by Kira Knightley, and we all remember this beautiful scene. I found it very, very romantic, obviously, the first time I watched it, when he um, confesses his love to Juliet. I don't remember who is Peter, who is Mark. Uh, oh, Peter is okay. Peter is her husband, and Mark is his friend. Okay. Anyways, so again, another love triangle. Mark is in love with Juliet, but Mark is also Peter's best friend, so he cannot be in love with her. So what he decides to do, he decides to be rude to her, sort of to hide his feelings, which okay, I kind of understand. But then she finds out that he has feelings for her and she just kind of lets it go but then on, on Christmas Eve he decides to follow up and he has this whole scene where he confesses um, his feelings for her and what does she do with her newlywed husband in the house in another room she runs out in the street and she kisses his best friend Let's just imagine this situation in real life for a second. How would you feel if your partner would kiss your best friend? Let's just think about it for a second. I don't think I would like that. <laughs> okay? And I, I don't think, you know, even if um, my partner's best friend would confess uh, feelings for me, that I would react in the same way. Like, yes, it's sweet, it's nice, but... I am with someone. You married the guy. You didn't just start dating him like a week ago. You been with the guy and you acting like this. I think it's very odd. It's very weird and uh, something which was intended to be cute. If you really think about it, it's kind of creepy. So yeah, it wasn't my favorite. Okay. And we are getting to another weird couple. So there is a Jamie and Aurelia. So Jamie is portrayed by Colin Firth. And uh, if you remember, Jamie comes back home one day. So he has a girlfriend, like he's in love with her. <coughs> one day he comes back home and he finds her cheating with his brother. <coughs> I don't know like what's with the cheating and love triangles in this whole movie. It's supposed to be about love and holidays, but it just ends up being about drama. 
okay, like I can take the drama part, no problem. But um, so he runs away to France and he's a writer and he starts writing a book and then he meets this girl Aurelia who is Portuguese and she doesn't speak a word of French. He speaks French a little bit. Um, so they have some trouble communicating and actually they have a lot of trouble communicating and somehow without speaking a single word to each other they fall in love like what she she actually had been his uh he, his maid for i don't know it didn't really show the passage of time but i, I assume something like a couple of weeks because it's not enough time to get to know someone even if you do speak language um which they didn't so basically he realizes that um he falls in love with her when uh, she drops his paper and they start flowing to the river and she takes off her dress and he sees her uh, basically half naked so he, he really falls in love with her body which is again weird like ugh, creepy um and also he doesn't he doesn't know anything about her like literally zero information but somehow he thinks that she's the most amazing person in the whole world without even knowing her, just judging by the looks. And I, I find it very shallow, I'm sorry. But he decides to learn Portuguese, so he takes the course. And then he comes back to Portugal on Christmas Eve to find her and again confess his feelings to her. And she of course says that she loves him too and all nine yards um, they end up together which is amazing like I, I love a good love story I do understand that you know even without speaking the same language it can happen but people who didn't really spend any time together didn't really have any kind of conversations or anything like that how on earth they would fall in love that's just me. I'm sorry. I, I just don't buy it. I understand where the writers were coming from. It's all nice and cute, but I don't buy it. All right. So uh, we are moving on to the, another weird couple, which is Prime Minister of Britain and his assistant Natalie. So as you remember, the Prime Minister was played by uh, Hugh Grant and okay where do i begin with this one so he's a prime minister obviously he acts like super cool guyish which prime minister i don't think would act um in any way but what do i know about prime ministers i'm very far from politics thanks god but you know um he's totally an unrealistic character and then uh we have here natalie who she curses a lot she's like sort of um girl next door and um she really likes him and he really likes her but he cannot admit his feelings for her obviously so they actually um it takes some time for them to sort of to be together but i don't know that whole thing is very cringy um that kind of relationship where you know a guy in power falls in love with like a regular girl we think that some stories were cuter than others i think that the whole story was very overused uh, and honestly i think among the stories i just told you i think this is like one of the least cringy ones but still i i wasn't really impressed with it, it just felt very flat and boring there were like no development of their um love story throughout the movie it was also pretty much in the end of the movie it was pretty much in, um at the point where it was in the beginning so it was just like very yeah all right good i guess um and then there is this weirdest weirdest couple uh who play in adult m movies so it's judy and john um and john is played by martin freeman and um well first of all yeah like the fact that they play in adult movies is kind of weird but then they show them like those super shy kind of people i'm sorry people who play in adult movies i don't think they are 
that shy. Um, and, you know, they have like those very weird conversations because they're like both super awkward and then they go for a cup of coffee and they fall in love. And um, again, the whole story just wasn't really there. It was, it felt very, very flat. To me personally, uh, there was no advancement of the character or of their storyline, but uh, again, comparing to other stories, I wouldn't call it the, the worst, I guess. It's just, uh, it just felt weird. What, what was I doing there in the first place since they're like very awkward and shy and also, you know, what are the chances they would have actually met at shooting adult movies? Just saying. And then another thing I, I didn't um, like about the movie is, um, it's not actually a couple, but there was this guy, hold on, if I can find his picture. I cannot, but anyway, so there was this British guy and he, he found um, British women like very snobbish. So he decides to go to uh, United States because women are loose over here apparently and um, he goes and not only he meets girls he actually has, has like a four, foursome or fifth some <laughs> um, with some girls who invite um, him after spending night um, at the bar so I just find it very very weird because I I, I don't think Yes, maybe American women are more open-minded when it comes to relationships, but they're not, I don't want to say the word, but, you know, they are not that, okay? Um, they're not going to just go in bed with some guy, like, with their girlfriends. It was totally, like, fake, very childish, and the whole scene just didn't make any sense to me. I'm glad that he gained his confidence for sure, but just, again, portraying um, American women that way, I found very disturbing, uh, that sort of generalization. Um, and, again, you know, I um, I just, yeah, I just didn't like that whole, that whole thing. Um, and then there is another character, so he used to be a rock star, and I forgot the name of the actor, um, but anyways, he, so he was on drugs, and now he's like in recovery, and he makes this uh, Christmas song, and he just acts like a douchebag, whole movie, and everyone just keeps liking him. I think that's like the most realistic part because, you know, celebrities do act like douchebags and everyone still likes them. But I just I just find that um, whole, you know, likable douchebag thing is a little bit overrated. Um, and again, I don't know why people were trying to praise him. Like, you know, he's just like such a national treasure. Um, yeah, I didn't like his character at all. I just found him very repulsive. I'm sorry, the way how he behaved with people. So yeah, so that was it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it felt like I was um, went in for about 20 minutes, but um, I just had to share this whole thing with you because it's interesting how I really, really liked this movie a few years ago and now it just doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't think I will be watching it anytime soon. Um, however, there were co quite snippets of good scenes here and there, but overall, the plot and the stories and the characters and the chemistry didn't make any sense to me. Uh, sometimes it felt sad, sometimes it felt somewhat offensive, sometimes it felt just wrong and creepy, so that's how I saw it. And please let me know in comments down below your thoughts on it. And also please let me know um, what is your favorite holiday movie. I would be very curious to check it out. And thank you so much for your subscriptions, for your likes. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.